16th of May 2016 with Michael O'Halloran, nickname Holly. No, yeah. Thank you. Um, Michael O'Halloran, 32, is England Road, Gary Owen. I started working in O'Mara's Bacon Factory when I was 15. I left school very early and my dad Brendan and my uncle Ollie worked there. So it was a family uh, orientated job, father, son, cousins and in-laws which was great at the time because we had work. So I started in the Mar Mara's Bacon Factory, I went in there as a boy and I did all the work that boys do inside in the, the tanks and other work bringing down the offal down to the shop and cleaning and what have you. So after a while I became a butcher, a qualified butcher in, in the factory. And there was three types of butchers, there was A, B and C. So I started in the C division and I ended up going up to the A division. What's the difference Michael? Sorry. The difference in the qualifications uh, of a butcher was that some fellas weren't qualified to do certain jobs. You had to be sure different skills with a knife. Right. So, like one instance was uh, you couldn't um, slaughter pigs unless you were a nail butcher. Mm. You couldn't cleave pigs unless you were a nail butcher because it was a skilled job. Mm -hmm. So, if you didn't stick the pig right, the pig would be destroyed and he'd be no good to okay. for processing. There was a way of doing it. You had, you had to put the knife in a certain area. And cleaving pigs in, you had to be dead accurate coming down the back because that side of bacon had to look perfect in the shop window. Mm -hmm. So they were the categories. So I ended up being a nail butcher as time went on. Um, I worked there for 16 years. Uh, I worked side by side with my dad. I used to cleave pigs and give him a break and do all that. My uncle used to mark the pig. And to mark the pig was, you mark from the tail to the, the neck, mm -hmm. and it's a straight line. So that's giving you a guideline with that when you were cleaving the pig, that you kept the line straight. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the jobs. Other jobs we did was, we'd be inside in, uh, the ice house all day, very cold. Inside in the tank, and there'd be sides of bacon falling mm -hmm. down to us, and we'd have to pour, pile them up like a brick wall, and salt them. And they, they were pickled in by, by big pumps and they were salted for three days and then we had to go in with your bare hands and put your hands into cold pickle and take out the sides to get them out onto the floor. So that was a kind of a, a sticky job for some people but you get used to it in the, in the end. So other jobs that was there then you had a cutting line and the cutting line consisted of Two, four, six, we said 11 people on the line. The line is moving, it's a belt, and the pigs would fall down onto the belt, and you'd have men at each side of the belt, mm -hmm. and you'd have a man taking out the eye bone, you'd have a man taking out the breast bone, you'd have a man cutting the back toe, you'd have a man taking off the, the front toe, the pig's toes now, you'd have another man taking out the, the uh, it's a bone that's in, in your socket and they used to pull it out by hand and then they used to pull it out by machine. It's called a blade bone. Okay. It's like your socket up here. Sure. So then they used to go down to my dad. My dad used to be on the saw down there and he'd trim off the, the backbone off it. And then they used to go down to the tank to other people who was down there. So that was that. But then we had a big killing line. The killing line would start above in the styes, we used to call it. That was that's where an area where the pigs were brought in by lorries, and they were stamped with certain numbers, so people know whose pig was worth what. Okay. So we start above above in the the um, the chaining area, as we call it. There'd be about fourteen pigs uh, hunted into a pen, and you were in there with an old pair of jeans. You're stripped to the waist and a pair of gloves, and that's all you had. So you had to put the chain around the pig's leg while he's he's still alive, and he's kicking the man, and you've got to hang him up. So then he'd go up there, and another man would stun him at the back of the neck, and he's stunned for a minute, and then this guy would go in and release the blood from him. Okay. He would go from there then, out along a line, and then 
two pigs at a time then would be dropped into, we used to call it the boat. It was a big container full of boiling water and there was pulleys to pull the pig along the water and when that was full then the pig would be um, scalded with the hot water mm -hmm. and the reason why that was there was to t loosen the hair that was on the pig. So then the pig would go into, we used to call it a scuttler, and it would revolve around with the two pigs in it, and it was timed, so it would open up then and leave two, two pigs fall onto a bench. And what did the scuttler do? What was that, that would take most of the hair off it. Okay. <coughs> be, do, be, hopefully there's going to be a small bit of hair left mm -hmm. in the pig. So it come out onto a little table, and there's two men there. One would uh, have a small knife, and he'd raise a vein in the back leg of the pig. Another man would put a gammon rope. He used to call it, it was a steel. It was a steel, two okay. hooks. And he was go in there and he used to hang up then. He would go from there then into the furnace. So this furnace was alongside us. And there was nothing but flames worked by gas. And that would open. So it was constant heat there. And the pig would go in, it would close. And it would kind of blacken it just to get the remainder off. It would leave that area then and go into another machine, maybe about 10 feet long, and it would have all loose blades in it. And that used to scrape the pig and take off much of the black colouring off it. You come out into another two men, they were up in a big height, and they they do the, the top legs and back and they'd have a knife and they'd scrape off whatever is left and the water's coming down it. Then it goes down low and you'd have men who would come in underneath the neck and clean all that. Then it used to go around the corner and you'd have a man there used to open the pigs. So his job consisted of opening the pigs and letting the belly fall out. <laughs> right? Then it go to the next man and he would round the bungut, which was beyond his backside, and he would take the belly out and throw it in at a table. And that belly used to go into the women behind us. In a room off you? A room it? off us. And the women then would pull the intestines. And as you know yourself, your gut is so long. Mm. A pig's gut was double ours. So the women would pull all that put it on a machine, it would go up the machine and it would take all the badness out of it mm -hmm. and it would go into a tank of water. Okay. They then eventually would tie so many together and they'd put them into a, a big bin and they'd put salt in it and used to salt the skins and those skins was used for sausages. Very good. So, to continue on in the line then, we, the next man then would cut the breastbone. The next man then would take out the, the liver, the heart and the lung. Then it would go down to the next man and he'd mark the pig for the cleavers. Go down to my dad then, or my uncle first, and he'd mark them. They'd go down to my dad and he'd cleave them. Then you had another man would take the, the backbone halfway out. You had another man would uh, break the joint in the head so you can take it off easy in the morning time for the cotton. It goes down to the weighing scale then, and the people at the weighing scale then would look at the stamp that was put on the pig when he came off the lorry, mm -hmm. and they'd look at the stamp, we say 145, and they'd look up 145 and they say it's belonged to Michael Holland. Mm -hmm. So they know that person's pig, pig is 145. They weigh it and it assess how much it's worth. Okay. You'd go around the corner from that then, and you had, you had boys working there then. Then the boys would have a, a stamper. It was worked by gas, and it was a little wheel, and on it was limerick bacon and things like that. And that used to be red hot, and they'd mark the pig the whole way down from the top leg all the way to the neck, and they'd do the same in the belly. And that print would come out like a tattoo yeah. on the bacon. It was burdened into it. So they'd leave there then, and another man then would be the last man on the line, and he'd knock out the last backbone. Then you had two boys, 
would take the pigs from him is to move in line, right? So they they take the pigs from there and they'd be shoving them into chills. The children would be at a certain temperature. So they'd fill up the whole chills. Now roughly we, we do about 300, 350 pigs a day. And the pigs are put in there then and they're left there until morning time. And in the morning time then, then they're brought out into the cutting room as we call it. That's where the belt comes into it. And they process the meat in from there. You take off your eye bone, take off, take off your breast bone, your skirts, your kidneys, and all that's done up there. So the overall, we had a massive area for the killing line. Yeah, sounds like it, yeah. You know? So other than that, that was the processing part of it. Then the other part of it was, you, you, were, you were dealing with shops and you were dealing with shops down the country. We had hardcore bacon. Then hardcore bacon would be um, pigs that would be, say, two inches in fat. Okay. And we used to take the ribs and the hocks out of them. Spare ribs yeah. and the hock, they would take it out. And that, that, the hand would be taken off, the shoulder would be left on this, that's put into a drum and a man would saw it. There's a pocket there when you take out the, when you take out the, um, the hock, there's a pocket. So that has to be stuffed with salt, kill bacteria and whatever. Mm -hmm. So they're all put down the ground in and well salted and they're left to mature then. For two weeks, is it? Two weeks and it could be longer than roughing there for two months. Because <laughs> hardcore bacon was well liked by the country people. Okay. They, they'd, they'd often buy it and hang it up inside in their sheds and leave it go yellow and all, leave it. Right. It was a, with, with a head of cabbage of course. Okay. <laughs> right. So that was the hardcore bacon part of it. Then we had, then years ago we were, um, we were supplying Germany, we were supplying big places across the world. We used to look for Limerick ham. Yeah. Limerick ham was the best ham around. To, the, the lads had their own uh, way of pickling it and seasoning it and what have you. Okay. Eddie McMahon and Stan used to put a big stamp on on the, the ham. And that was an art and so on. And he'd have it vaseline and all and present yeah. it because he used to go to, I go to the president. Might go to the doll, could go anywhere down through the years. Do and you know what the what they did to make it so special, Michael? Well, this they were, Omar's was always known as the Limerick Ham because at the time they, they were the only ones actually used to do it. They had their hams and they had their bacon. I mean, they showed off their bacon in, in shows mm -hmm. and uh, in say like the RDS and things yeah. like that, or meeting. And it has to be presented right, and and as you, if you read the book, the butcher book I gave mm -hmm, you, mm -hmm. it would tell you you had to use a knife in a certain way. There's little muscles on on the bacon that had to be seen mm -hmm. by people. If you didn't see that, you butchered it wrong. Okay. Just little things, but that was a real skill. Skill, a skill. So Mickey Mara himself, he owned the place. He was a gentleman. I mean, he. He wasn't just a boss. He was like one of our own. He often came out of his office and we'd be, we'd be shot men. Take off his tie, roll up his sleeves, put on an apron and he'd go up there and butcher. Yeah. So that was, that was, that was, that was, that was I always admired him. He, did, he never, was never frightened of getting wet. Never frightened of mucking in as a boss. Yeah. You know, and if you were ever in trouble, you had an issue at home or you, you were shot something, you, you could knock at his door there and walk in and sit down and talk to him and say, look Mick, I could do it, a new fridge or a new thing. All right, so see, what can you pay back a week? It was taking all your wages. Very good. So that's the kind of man he was. Yeah. And he's still alive now to today. Yeah. today. And he, he went from, what did, what did the lads tell me? He went from the owner of a baking factory to making buns. Yeah, outside in Patrick's well. <laughs> so that was Mickey O'Mara himself. Oh, he was a gentleman. If I had any other workers, I've worked in a few places since, mm. and I I cannot say a bad word against him. Good. You know, and he gave references there now about my dad and myself, and I tell you one thing, it was brilliant. Like you know, he was a gentleman. So I worked there then for 
16 years. Mm -hmm. So my dad then, my dad took early retirement to save my job. Mm -hmm. I was after getting married. And I think I was living in Shannon at the time, but um, my dad took the redundancy to save our jobs. A lot of our dads. There was just too many of you inside, Michael? They were cutting down staff. staff okay. my head, like in, in, so my dad said, look, I've enough done. You leave, the, leave my son there. And when was this roughly, Michael? Oh, jeez, what was this? 16 years, 16, 96, 92, 80 something. Okay, so they were beginning to scale. But, um, Oh, yeah, I was saying it like my dad would still have worked on. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But the fact that I was going to lose my job or whatever, yeah, he, a lot, of, a lot of the elderly men did it like, you know? So I did 16 years there and then eventually they decided to move as all these new laws came in. We were, they were saying we were at the wrong side of the river because mm -hmm. we were actually inside in town slot. Yeah. And the smell wasn't the best, like coming what out. What was of it like, Michael? Well, yeah. I did. I wouldn't notice it. Yeah. You know, but people walk in the streets now, and I mean, across the road from Amara's Bacon Factory at the time was the old town, mm. and they used, to, they used to have people eating out in the front, and you could hear the you could hear the pigs screaming and roaring, and lorries coming in, and they could have sixty or eighty pigs in it, and smell it. And a summer's day like today, yeah. like, and you know, just yeah. So they said that uh, there wasn't enough money there to build another factory at the other side of the, the river. So eventually he had to leave us all go. And that was it. So mm -hmm. the other aspect of Amara's was we had a small little shop in the front of it in Rochester Street. Is it then Street? Rochester Street. Rochester Street, yeah. And it was called Ray's. Richie Ray's, is that it? Richie Ray's. And in there they used to have the cold meats. And you would always get your fresh offal then because we, when we cut it, it was going straight to the shop. So it was nothing stale. Everything was fresh from the from the, from the factory yeah. coming to the shop. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, Michael. What's offal exactly? Offal is your breastbone, eyebone, pigs' tails, yeah. and skirts and kidneys, and hearts, and pigs' toes, and, pig's toes and all that. Okay. You know. So we had a we had a, a ritual then uh, in in the factory. We used to um, we used to boil our sausages. Yeah. So, of a Saturday morning, we could be doing overtime. Yeah. We'd all come in, and one day, girls be making the tea for us. You'd have a big canteen, with small canteen, but mm -hmm. everybody had their own mugs and whatever. But the priority was get the sausages on. So we get a big steel bucket about that size, and with a handle in it, and we'd go up into the sausage room, which we weren't supposed to go there, but. That was part and parcel of the thing, and we take about four or five pounds of sausages, <laughs> and we cut them up and put them into the boiling water. And you put boiling water into it, and you cover it with a towel. And every fifteen minutes, somebody would go along and change the water, put more boiling water into it. So we do this around nine o'clock. Our tea break would be at ten, so the sausages would be just done then in time. So we drain the, the water sometimes, other times we wouldn't, just bring it in the hot water. We sit down with our, our bread and our sandwiches and we now go out and take one or two each and eat the thing. That's mad. But the boiled sausages weren't brown now, like frying them or anything like mm. that, were boiled in boiling water. Mm -hmm. And they were the loveliest thing going. A lot of people say it was disgusting. But if you were dying from a hangover, it's the best cure of the whole lot. <laughs> I swear to God, it would cure you. Yeah. You know? Would so, they go brown at all? Or no, just, no, pure skin, white. Yeah, yeah. The skin would be rolling off them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's, you're the first person that has Try it at home someday yourself. <laughs> okay. put, put, put three sausages into a pot. Yeah. Turn it on. When you come to the boil, simmer it down. And test it with a fork. And taste them. And tell me then, if I okay. see you again at 100 years, do. Tell me they were lovely. Okay. So yes. that was another our perk we had. Another perk we had... Um, we started, well, before I went that day, they started an interferon team. Okay. So, um, we had good players in it. We had one man, Brendan Colopy. He actually got a trial across in England. And he was a butcher with us. Okay. But he didn't make it, but he was a handy keeper. Still good, yeah. yeah. So, we were there, you know, and 
I started playing when I was 16, I think. So I was playing, we were playing above in Kells Park one day. And we were playing against the post office, if my, my memory is right. So next thing, we came off in the hall and this fella came along and he was talking to a fella on the side and he says, who was that crowd? Do you know the model's back in fact, he don't know what to say. <laughs> but who's Baby Joe? Who's Lager? Who's Della? Who's Kutchie? Just some names. <laughs> Are they sure they're foreigners? It was all our nicknames yeah, we were known by. <laughs> so the man had a clue. He, all he could hear was all these funny names. Yeah. So we, we did fairly well in there. We won a few trophies, we won a few leagues and the whole lot down through the years. But the whole scenario then was everybody had a nickname. Everybody in the factory had a nickname. Started from the oldest to the youngest. Okay. So if I was to name all the few of the nicknames that was there, I'd have to start with the oldest man. That would be Eddie McManus. Mm -hmm. And he was known as Cake Bread. <laughs> right? I was known as Bobby Joe. My father was Tasty. Jimmy Galvin was Barney. Uh, Joe Hayes was the bottle. <laughs> Logger McMahon, Logger. Della, Della Sullivan. Who else is Della. Jots is Michael Welsh. Okay. We had all different. Tuffa Doyle was another young lady. He's dead now, Lord of Tuffa. I can't remember most of them, but they're the ones I so, can't remember. But everybody had a nickname. Do you want to explain a couple how they got their name? Well, see, uh, how did I get mine? I was the youngest. I was called Bobby Joe. They called me Baby Joe. Right. Because oh, I was yeah. in a very yeah. young age. Uh, what, what was this? Oh, the bottle uh, was an elderly man. They called him the bottle because he loved points of Guinness. <laughs> bottles of Guinness. Uh, Jimmy Galvin was called Barney because he was like Barney out of the Flintstones. <laughs> Uh, Lager, Lager was known as Lager because he was like a Lager fellow who used to chop logs, big men, big strong okay. men. And it <coughs> just came in, then they might, if we did something silly, the name stuck in you. Okay. There was one lad there that called him Lapa. And the reason why he was called Lapa was something fell on his lap and he couldn't handle it. Look away, Lapa, or that, and things like that. So he just yeah. went down like that. Yeah. But we had all these nicknames, but anytime we went anywhere, Normally call you Holly or Michael or Eddie. Hey, cake, tasty, lager, Dara, come over here. You know, just all like that. Yeah. Our foreman then was called Timmy Boy. Okay. And then we had Yardy. He's always Yardy. Yardy Callan. So we all had little names like that. So as I said, then he came to the stage and the elderly men kind of left and left with the young fellas. And so they decided to close us down then. So it was kind of, where are we going to go next? Because it was a family job, father, sons, mm -hmm. cousins. Yeah. So now you were coming out into the real world, as they would call it. Mm -hmm. Who do I know is going to get me a job? You know, so yeah. even to this day, mm -hmm. um, how would I put it to you? There isn't even a bacon factory in Limerick now. No. There's nothing here. Everything's been imported or coming from Galway or coming from all over the place. Which I totally disagree with for the simple reason is I think Limerick was too soft. We left too many factories go over Limerick. I mean, we had Matheson's, we had Clover Meats, we had Amara's, mm -hmm. we had Shaw's. We had, I mean, it was big, big industries here. No, Pigs, no. cattle, <coughs> things. So, I left there and I went to another butcher's and it was called Hinchas in the dark road. Okay. So I started in Hinchas. So I was doing the pigs down there and then I went from pigs to beef. When was this Michael, sorry? Uh, I was 16 years in Amara's so I was idle for about, I think I was idle for a month and I started to blow Hinchas. You don't know who owned Hinch the dog? Peter Hinchas was his name. Peter Hinchas. And they, they were an abattoir. Oh, okay, yeah. They, they, they were slaughtering for all the butchers in Limerick. No other butcher shops? Yeah. They, he used to slaughter for all them, for Dunn stores and... Oh, <laughs> 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 you come out and you're, you come out and you're up there. But um, um, I, I worked down there for five years then. Okay. And 
Where did they go? That was there? just killing pigs then. That's we're, all slots them down there. Yeah. And sheep and and cattle, cattle and all that, yeah. I left there then and I went to uh, a place called Carol Sea Seafoods. I went fillet and fish. Okay. <laughs> I you became a mumba <laughs> from a butcher to, to delicate stuff yeah. and fish. That's good. So I was there for t I, I went there for three years then. Okay. I was very seldom on the labour. I, I never yeah. drew the labour as such. I left there then and I was idle for a week and I started in a place called Banta Global Turnkey outside Raheen. We were on the hip of Dell. We were doing work for Dell. Okay. And I was there for nine years and they closed in 2009 and Michael retired. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I actually got a heart attack. Oh, okay. I and uh, not in serious, yeah. just, it's just my own fault, like, you know what I mean? Okay. So now I have We're a little place with me, so I can't work no more. Yeah, very good. Uh, cool. So other than that, I think the best job that I had been in had to be a Mars. I have great memories of That's a good, um... I have great memory. memories of a Mars, and as I said, I did, with the photographs you can yeah, see there, yeah, like, and your dad. it's, um, it was a place everybody got on. It, People, some people say, how do you walk in there and all We don't find the smell in there, do you understand? You wouldn't be used to it? Some people would, from the outside looking in, would say, jeez, it would be disgusting to say that. Mm. Now, we had schools coming in there. Yeah, like school tours? Mm. School Why tours, yeah, we had girls coming in for the presentation. I'll tell you a joke in a minute. Okay. And uh, they were like, oh, they were all running and crying, like, yeah. up there and all that stuff. They were doing um, biology. Yeah. So they came looking for a heart, Lungs. and they came looking for the eyeballs, yeah. <laughs> or the pig, or the half pig's mm. head. So I went up with my, my boss, Mikey Callahan Yardy. He says, Holly, will you go up and get her, get him a few eyes and put him into a bag? I went, of course, so I, so I went up and took the eyes out of the pigs, and I put them into a small little bag. So I put, put two in my hand, like that. And the girl was there, and she said, you get me the eyes? I said, they're in there. Oh, jeez, she's she like that. So you're all right, I said, love, I put him into another bank. I said, well, I said, there's something for yourself. And I gave her the two eyes, they popped and I well, let's see her roar. She ran for it, oh. out the door. She was crazy. <laughs> simple things, like, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's just lesson. They were the kids, like, you know. But I said, this is all about biology, like, I mean, they're going to cut in the eye, they're going to cut in the heart. Yeah. And the, the next thing they could have a frog on the table, they'll be doing the same thing, so. I know, we had, we had good times there, too. It was, cool. um. If it was still open today, I still think we'd be working there. Okay. I still have the steel. From the factory? From the factory. And when you say the steel, do you mean the... For sharpening. Oh, okay. I showed you on the Do you definitely want I still have it inside there. Okay. And I got that when I went into this at 16 years of age. And you still have it? Still have it. It would still do the job, I'd say. Oh, it's still sharpening, yeah, usually. Yeah. But other than that, what else can I say to you about it? Can oh, the 15th of August, of course, was Ladies, um, Ladies Day. And how Ladies Day came around was we were on strike. Yeah. And um, we had no money. Dad was out. I was out only after getting married. And um, we just had a few bob come, but we had a thing called the Butcher Society. Mm -hmm. And um, so we were out for a few weeks and everything was going wrong. And they said, we'll say a prayer to our lady. So they said the prayer to lady and the strike was fifth, fifth, uh, fixed. So they said, we'll donate one day every year to our lady. We won't kill pigs. Mm -hmm. So the 15th of August thing came to Ladies Day. So we'd lose, we wouldn't get paid for it. So we just lose that mm -hmm. day. So you could fall in any day now as you know yourself. So if you fell over, say Monday, mm -hmm. we we'd make up our money on the Saturday because we were working overtime to make up that day. Mm. Mm. So we had Ladies Day then, so we had a Mass at St John's Cathedral mm. down here. And mm. when the Mass was over, we'd all go to Jerry O'Dea's pub. Mm. Every butcher, mm. Clover Meads, Madison's, Amara's. Yeah. So the society had a little, how would I put it, a funding. So everybody get, might get one or two drinks. John Jody would make up sandwiches and we'd have our sausages and cocktail sauces, get them done in the cafe and 
bring it up there. We'll have a whole day down there then. We'll have to be playing cars, cracking jokes, have a sing song. <laughs> we'll come down the road at six o'clock that night or whatever. So that was ladies' day. So then they got together and they pooled a load of money together and they they put a shrine of Our Lady in St John's Cathedral, a big statue of Our Lady. So that's down the right in the side of St John's Cathedral. So every 15th of August then we have our Mass. So over the last few years when when the butcher business kind of went, it was like very few turning up for the, the Mass because it wasn't actually original as such. And a lot of the old butchers had died. So now that they're bringing out this 100 years, we've been looking for this for a long time. Mm. There was one man, especially Dallas Sullivan was his name, and he was a character in himself. Be, I will have to get a reunion, I will have to get a reunion, get all the lads together. And it should have been done a few years ago, but yeah. now that it's the 100 year is, is a good mm -hmm. thing. But unfortunately, we've lost great characters. Yeah. We've lost some characters, like, you know. So um, now with the 100 years coming up, I'm looking forward to seeing lads I haven't seen in a long course, time. I can imagine. Yeah. You know, and it'd be great to go back up to Jerry and Lee's and have an old catch up and get a photograph taken. As I said, your Tony Punch would definitely have four of us. There's a big group of us taken above Jerry O'Dees when he opened his new lounge. What year now? I don't know. He was on the paper and everything, Limerick Leader and all. But if we could get a date of when Jerry O'Dee opened his new lounge, the, the leader might have it. Okay. Every, you, oh, there was about 40 of us in it. Okay. Which were, I mean, the majority from Dead Note in Clover Mates. Omaras and, and Madison's. Okay. So maybe Tony Punch might have an idea. An idea yeah. of, of a few of those photographs. So other than that, we had some guys, women working there, like I mean, hard working women, like. Can I pause this one second? Sorry. This is okay. And you just run the knife up and down it and so, uh, pass it on, yeah. So you have to put your, your finger there under like a guard. Okay. And if you put it that way, the knife slips. You, you get a thing called lock jaw. Right. By cutting your finger there. Okay. So that's the steel, you, you, you hold it that way. That's, that's a more modern knife, not yeah, a modern yeah. use. We had a timber, timber handle knife. Right. It's the same point as that. So you, you had a. Everybody had their own style. I, mine was. I could be looking at you. Yeah. I had I knew exactly where I was going. I wasn't coming down here. I was top to middle. I wouldn't go down any further, as, as you can see. And I can look down and look. And you see. And how long do you have to do that for? It's, it's, well, you can feel it now. How often? Watch your finger now. I will. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. And how um how often a week would you do it? No, you have to do it every time because I mean you're doing you're doing 180 pigs an hour. Yeah. So you'd have the steel hanging over you here. Yeah. And a belt. You had the knife in your hand. So you're doing pigs are coming and you're doing all this so that the blunt might go so you have to, if about two seconds, give it another rub. Yeah. Put it down again, do you do it again? You could be you might steal your knife fifty or sixty times in one in one session with with, with the with the knife with the with the um, And this is from Omaris, this yeah. is this That's is my first one. one I had, look. And, and where the, did you get these? They were given to you. Okay. By the job, so when they closed they took it. Yeah. That's moment yeah, yours, yeah. That's, that was mine, so it's fairly rough down. But I've used that now in Henshaws. I've yeah. used it in the fish factory as well. It's yours. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's just what it's do you call steel. this? Steel. Just just steel. Steel. It's, it's, nice it's, shot it's steel. Shopner. Yeah. Steel okay. shopner. Perfect. So I have that remembrance of the the thing that Your you factory. Know. But other than that, like I mean <sighs> Michael, could I ask you do you know or could you tell me where all the shops were that sold the Limerick products? You had uh, you had the Bacon Company of Ireland, which is in, down the end of Roger Street. You had McNamara's across the road in Roger Street. You had Hall's down the end of Roger Street. You had Pat O'Connor's up in the top of William Street. You had Ray's, Richard Ray's used to sell it. You had um, you had Mahers up in Parnell Street. You had another Cusick up there. You had who else was there? Now? 
you had a place called Hannah Howard down in the old Irish town mm -hmm. in Limerick and she used to do her pig stores. She used to sell her pig stores down there. Did anywhere else sell them now? Uh, every shop had them, but she yeah. was she was well known. For them. She was an old woman, she's called Shaw, I was in a young flat, little shawl and she'd get her toes and bring it down and she used to sell them down there uh, off the profit like. Okay. No, as I said, there was other big shops, but they would have been the small shops. Yeah. We we deliver around that area, the van would go around that area. So these would have been basically for the Then country. we had another van would go to um, Lizzie Casey. Okay. They go out, out to Innes. They go down, they do all clear. You know? Mm -hmm. So, Kilkey, they go as far as Kilkey with the van. Michael Sheehan now is still on the road mm -hmm. today. He has his own van on the road, doing yeah. bits and bobs. We often loaded the van at 8 o'clock in the morning. And the van had been touching the ground with the weight of the stuff that was in it. And he'd come back that night at 5 o'clock and there'd be hardly nothing in it. He'd have his trays of sausages, his hard bacon. He'd have his army size of, of bacon. He'd have his breast buns, he'd have his eye buns. All packed in for different areas in Kilkey and... Lizzie Casey and all other places around that area. Okay. Yeah. And he'd go off delivering there for hours and hours. And he, he'd often come back and he might have new customers. So I think we had Michael Sheehan, Henry O'Grady, Roger Sherlock. They were our three van drivers. Okay. And they used to they'd do all the country then. Great, isn't it? You know? So. Oh, well, we had. Um, we had good businesses. It's, it was a pity to see it go on because we catered for everybody. Like, I mean, Why do you think it declined? Like that? Well, it, I, I don't know. I think it's when, when all these new laws come in, there's health and safety and there's no hygiene and things. Everybody had to change, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or, as I said, our factory was in the centre of a town. So they wanted us to move outwards, and that's outwards and and from the thing like that. And, but, um, I mean, if we look at it now, to, to this day, I don't actually really know where the stuff is coming from. Who Who's slaughtering for duns, who's processing for dun stores. I think Denmark are still quite big. Something like that, right? And I know pack and tripe now is coming from Galway. And the pack and tripe in Limerick used to come from Tracy's. Yeah. That's not far from here. No, it is over, you're over the bridge. And it was a, there was a fella called Matty Spoons. That's what we used to call him, Matty Spoons. He'd leave Mary Street yeah. with a drum. Yeah. I'd say about the height of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he'd have it on a wheelbarrow. Yeah. And he'd bring that wheelbarrow all the way up to Roach Street. And he'd come in underneath where we were slaughtering the pigs upstairs. Yeah. And the blood would come down through a gully. And he'd have the drum underneath that. And he'd let all the blood go into it and fill it up. Mm and start stirring it, take the clots out of it. Yeah. And he'd cover that. Now that would be some weight. And he'd walk that down to St Mary Street, down to the packet and dry place. Yeah. And they'd process the packet then. And, and they'd, 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 yeah. they'd sell it off then. And Michael, just there, if it's blood coming down a gully, if he wasn't there, where would the blood go? Into the river. Into the river, okay. So the fish had a feel that. Yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. such. Yeah. But um, they were the only place you used to use, uh, you use the, the blood in the all the pigs. Okay. So when we closed down then, he actually used to go down the dock road to collect the blood. And he was some man, he was some character, he was well known in Limerick. There was, some, there was a few photographs taken for, him for the, the archive in the town hall one time. Okay. So if you could get it, somebody down there would have been to Matty Spoons, was his known, the pack and tripe man. But uh, he had a tough lad. He was, I'll tell you one thing, he was no big lad. He was only about five foot. Right. And he used to play the spoons in. That's what he was called. <laughs> I was thinking spoons, about you know? <laughs> So he used to collect the blood there in, in, in Amaras. Yeah. And actually, there was nothing going to waste, really, in Amaras because we had a thing called a digester. And this is where all the waste mm -hmm. went. And it come off the killing line into this big like a burner 
fall down into this. So everything was everything everything was burned inside in this. So every week then it used to be cleaned out. But down at the end of it used to be an oil. And the oil was taken out and put into drums. And that was used and that was used for makeup. For makeup? Really? Yeah. <laughs> you could put that down the, the oil that came out of the waste from the pigs yeah. was used for soap and makeup. Soap and, and makeup, okay. That was called a digester, and how are you going to spell it now? All the waste went into the digester, mm. and the oil came out and was used for, for makeup for women. So you know what you're going to no, you know put in your face. <laughs> no, that's true. Michael, let's guess. You know? Michael, so, can I ask you? Sorry, I know there's loads of questions, no. but um, the clothes. Your dad here is on a striped. Well, we had we had a, we had overalls. Yeah, it was a striped a striped navy blue. Yeah, um, coat. Mm -hmm. We had white boots, welting boots, mm -hmm. because it was constant water and blood, and you know yourself. So the clogs were gone at this stage, were they? The clogs were nearly gone at, at, at this stage. Yeah. The women used to wear the clogs. It was some left them, and. My dad used to have when I was a child, he'd bring me home a pair of clogs yeah. and I'd use them for skating down the road. We used yeah. to have skates coming down our hill and you put on the clogs and it was steel at the end of it. Yeah. And you'd just slide? Slide down, it's a bit of ice skating. Yeah, I was going to say, was there ice? Yeah. <laughs> so in the winter, anybody's dad that worked in the butchers, he always got you a pair of clogs. And we'd have them out there. Anyone could put them on them and just slide down the hills. Mad, isn't it? Mad. Mad. So we had that, but then, we, then before I went in there, my dad just used to suddenly have um, a canvas apron. Yeah. And if you got wet from the pit or anything, all your clothes would turn white. From the salt? From the salt. So if, if I'd often have a pair of jeans, and if any salt could have my jeans, they like faded jeans. Like, I mean, people say, Jeez, how do you afford them? They like faded <laughs> jeans. Like, it was the salt that died them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So then they, they brought in the um, they brought in the, the rubber aprons. It was all oh, yeah. kind of health and safety. Then it just says they brought in the rubber aprons to keep it dry, which you could never keep dry them because something that always no, you kept down on top of your some uh, you you'd be opening the pig or something, he'll blow out on top of you, like you know what I mean, things like that. So, um, did he ever open the pig and have little babies? Yeah, or the bottom. We were often open uh, a sow. A sow was a mother pig. Mm. A sow now could be the link to that, that chair. Mm. Oh my god, okay. And about that height. Yeah. And she, she might have 15, 20 bonnets. Right? Yeah. Now we were often there, like, and we, we'd open up a sow and there'd be bonnets in her. But, um, the reason why we slaughtered her was mm. the, the bottles were dead inside her. Okay. Mm. Right, so the, the farmer might not want her anymore, so come into us. So when we open her up, then <laughs> all these little bottles, little things on that side, yeah. falling out of her. It was. You, you, you had to be into it. Yeah. You know, we had one or two characters now that wouldn't touch a pig, and they were butchers. You just had to wear gloves, Mer marigolds. Yeah. Washing the wear. Oh, Holly, no. So, what are you doing as being a butcher? Like, come on, get your hand in. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But, um, it kind of went. Mm. They had to say if they didn't come into it, the, the issues and mm. all that. But it was a job like mm. you were shown by your dad. Everybody was shown by each other's dad yeah. to do a certain job. They were trained in. My dad showed me how to cleave pigs, mm -hmm. and he used to say to me, whatever you do, Mike, don't ever get caught for this gym, job, because his back was shagged over it. Mm -hmm. And I said, I won't. He said, don't be learning on this side. He was laughing to me. Mm -hmm. And I looked at it in one hand. And I was looking at my dad in slot and I'd be cleaving pigs, and, and I see him when he comes home to work, and his back would be close, and he'd be falling asleep and all that. And I said, it's time now he stepped in. I used to have said, go on over there, you and hold it. They tell you, and I'll leave him all day for you. Just give him a break. Yeah. Then as he was getting older, he'd often say to Mikey, Mikey, yeah. can I have Holly? Give me a break. Mikey said, go up and help her father. Okay. Which was almost fair enough, like, you know what I mean? It was not a big deal. It wasn't a big deal, like, or anything like that. But, but then we went from Cleveland, they changed over 
as I said, times change to an electric saw. Oh, okay. And the electric saw was a, a big blade in the front. And we, you held it like that. And it was on these pulleys. Yeah. So all you had to do was in the, the motor, just one, okay. two, three, four, five, cutting. Just the saw was doing it. And how many times did you cleave the pig before? It depends on how good. Well, my, my dad had a cleaver. That was his own cleaver. And he used to keep, a, he used to keep an edge in it. Mm. So he'd make out one, two. He'd have... He'd have it cut down about four, four blows. Okay. Down that sounds head. good. But oh, jeez, yeah, it's very good. Yeah. Because the length of the pig. All the fellas would have to be tipping away because they, they, they were afraid in case they destroyed a bit, the, the pig. Yeah. Because you had to come down at a certain angle. You didn't c come down that way. You had to angle your cleaver so the bone would come off this side and stay on that side. Okay. So you, you see it there? Yeah. You see, he's cleaving there. So he's taking the bone off of there to leave it on this side. Okay. Right, and you can, you can, oh, you can't see the tail. There. So if you know that it wasn't anywhere brighter, you'd know which side to see. The, see, would see the bone there yeah, now? Yeah. He left the bone over that side now there, okay. and over there then is your rib. Yeah. Right, and this part here then is that's the belly. Yeah. And that's the back. And this is your ham for Christmas. Okay. Right. Yeah. As you can see there, and over here then is end straight. Okay. So that door used to be always left open because you had constant heat. I was doing a way to get the steam to go to. Mm. Oh, the thing just very warm in the summertime. Yeah. Medicine, mm -hmm. so yeah. What was it like? What was the factory like, Michael? Was it all concrete or? It was all tiled. <laughs> tiled. White tiles. The walls. To easy clean. Walls had to be all tiled. Uh, the floor. The floor was done in a kind of. Um, it wouldn't be a rough floor now, you know, so everything was, you, you could walk on it. Everything had to be cleaned down into gullies, all the gullies came in there because you were constantly cleaning it. And where did that water go? Did it yeah, all into the storage, yeah. went out into the river. You know, then we had a lard plant in there. Yeah. L-A-R-D, lard, it's yeah. like a fat. Yeah. And that came from the lard of the pig, it used to be pulled out, what was it called, the mudgeon. Something like that. Is it mudger? Yeah. And that white stuff used to be taken out and turned into a trolley. And the boy would come along and take it and it went to, went to this, um, about the size of this. And it would put into a machine and it was clean, going through all different pipes and what have you. And it would boil, so in big, big steel tanks, and they'd boil it. And come out of that, then it goes into this filter, and you'll have two beams. And if there's any dirt, the beams would sensorize it. It's a new modern time now coming in, like, and uh, that would go over to this side. And then they'd make the lab. We have trays for that size, mm -hmm. and you put 24 b bags mm -hmm. into the, the trays, and you put the trays in, in underneath a pump, and they had little like nipples like that mm. so you pull it and the lard will come out boiling lard will come out into the paper mm -hmm. it was like um like a greaseful bag yeah. and the lard would stay inside in that then and you take it and put it over and one and once it got ha hard then the girls would come along and fold it mm -hmm. and they were put into boxes and that was your lard for the for the for the shops mm -hmm. for cooking your food and the whole so there was actually no waste in the pig it's unreal and alongside that then there was a ham house We'd bone out hams, which is that part there again. Yeah. And that'd be boned out. We put a bit of seasoning into it, and we're put into pots. And the pots would be kind of and come back in a novel like that. And they would put into a cooker, and the hams were cooked. Mm -hmm. so you take the ham out of the pot then, when they were cooked. And put them on a the table and you'll have two men with knives and they'll be trimming off the waste fat off it and trimming it and then you put the uh, breadcrumbs on it. Okay. So that's where you got your cool ham for the shops. Yeah. So we used to process all that and then we'd pre-pack them and they were going all over the place. So if you went into the shop with your pre-pack, he just cut the pre-pack, he put it on the slicer and there's your sliced ham. 
Do you ever skin ham with, with, yeah. with, with the, with the orange like grape crumbed crumbs? Ham. That's a crumbed ham. It's and that's that part there. With all the skin taken off and the bones taken all of it, that's your cooked ham. Like that's a real. Right? Yeah. Then alongside that, on the loft, as we call it, definitely. If you were to go down, do you know the car park in Road Street? Yeah. Have you walked in there? Oh yeah, that was Omara. That, that was um, that was Omara's yeah. from the front to the back. Yeah. That was your area. And there's still tiles on the walls. Yeah, that's your area. Yeah. Going out to the laneway, and then you had your height or the loft overhead that. So it wasn't as high as that, was it? Well, that was it. The whole height and everything. You had your first floor here. We used to they would go up the stairs then, and there was our loft. Yeah. Now that was the rest of it in overhead. The two, the two floors of the car park was the height of all of Marlon's making right there. So that big area was blunt to us. And then you had the small coast across With the small coast, that, that, that was down the floor. But when you're finished with the ham house, you go into the sausage house. Mm-hmm. That's where all the women were used to be. Mm-hmm. And they used to link, link the sausages. Yes. So uh, you, a man would come in with um, meat all cut up. Mm-hmm. We used to use sow meat. The sow was used as sausage meat. That's why our, our sausages were more meat them than anybody else. There was no bread or only a small few crumbs in it. Yeah. Bit of seasoning. Yeah. So they had to be that had to be weighed up certain amount of meat, certain amount of rust, certain amount of water. Mm-hmm. So you get your flavour. And why sow's meat? Mm-hmm. Well, the sow 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 was a big, an overgrown pig. The, the fat would be that thick in it. You wouldn't eat it like. Yeah. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Mm-hmm. So if you put it into, into, into sausage Would that go into pudding as well or is that separate? That's separate all of it. Pudding is made out of blood. Mm-hmm. And seasoning is it? And some people put um, pearl barley into it. Mm-hmm. Not a wrong pudding? Yeah. yeah. The horseshoe? Yeah. There's pearl barley in there. Okay. The long ones that you get in dinnies and things always in the old blood and a bit of seasoning okay. inside there. So the girls have been said in and mm-hmm. they had a machine they would chop up all the, the meat to make it very f- fine as possible. That was taken in and put into another machine. Mm-hmm. And I told you about the women were pulling the guts inside in the slaughterhouse. Mm-hmm. Those skins were put over a pipe that lint. Mm-hmm. And the men had hit a button there and the meat would press down to that and out comes the sausages. And they'd be firing mm-hmm. out like this. Skin used to keep that going. And the women did would go along and they have little scales in front of them and they, they do them in 16s and then you, you regulate the machine again and you make the fat sausages and then they might do the fat sausages and they'll be doing that all day. And the how many sausages. women will be there, Michael? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Depends on how busy you are, could it be yeah. eight women? Okay. Eight women and two men. Okay. And one man bringing down. The sausages down to the shop to sell straight away. And come out of there then, you had the offices where all the, the office staff used to work. Come down the steps then. And we're down on the main floor. And down on the main floor then, uh, you had the leads, they used to call the stitch in a bale. Uh, you get f- four sides, and they put into a canvas bag. And you'd have a needle with that length, and you have a string. And you stitch the bag, and that used to go into lorry and be exported all over. Just like just as it was, mm. nothing else. Nothing just else, just into the bag. They go up to mm. Boris of Cain, they go up to Dublin, mm. and they'd be all full sides, and they'd be inside in canvas bag. The 40 foot lorry would come into our yard on a Friday, yeah. and we'd fill that 40 foot lorry up to the top with four sides inside in each bag. And they go to Dublin. Yeah, mm-hmm. did all Dublin, forty foot lorry, and that might go twice a week. A lot of pigs. So over in the corner, then we had a thing called a smoking area, and we used to bring the sides out like that, and you'd hang them up, and uh, there was trolleys there. There we go, six foot, and you have little less hooks. Mm-hmm. They'd be welded together and then one hook up there so you'd, you'd lock it into the sh- shoulder, two fellas lift it up and then you put six sides in a line and two in the middle 
and two trolleys went into the smokehouse at the time. So you set it on a timer and you put in sawdust. Mm. Uh, the sawdust then it would burden and the smoke would ex escalate into the into the, the, the smoking area. And after the second and then a bell would ring, so you come over and switch it off. You'd open the doors and then now the smoke would come out and your bacon would come out brown like that. That's and how long was it in there? Could be in for about three hours, four okay, hours. Okay, that's all. Not overnight, really. We could often lift it over because the machine would knock off itself. Yeah. Do no harm. But it come out and you have a lovely smoke smell okay. off it. You had three, was it three or two different types? It was mainly so with the meant to tell you there. There was maple. It was a maple timber they used to use for maple flavour. And then you had the only smoked uh, bacon. And the maple now would be a lovely little smell of a maple now, you know. It would be a timber, but that, that flavour would go through the smoke. And the smoke would mm. go through the bacon. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, I mean, all, these, all this is gone now. If we look at some people, if we, if we look at some people now, you go now, you won't get skin in the Russia. Yeah. It's mad, isn't it? And now you love the skin in Russia. Look, yeah. the skin of the Russia. They're smoky Russia. That's the tasty part. Tasty part is a bit of fat. Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. if people are into <laughs> cutting down interest? and this, that, and the other, like, you know. Um, I was going to ask something else a minute ago. Um, Mike, is there any characters in the factory? Can you remember any main characters or any funny stories? These stories, Jesus, let me see now. Of course, we had Della. Della Sullivan was a lawyer. Della, the lawyer, he was called. Della been making up jokes and telling fibs and things like that. No one would ever trust him. You know? <laughs> um, we, uh, we we pulled a few stunts in there. We were often boxes of lard gone down, and we fell away and down below. For you, you slide them down to. Um, a slider, yeah, and we'd often went and put two cement blocks into the in, into the box and slide it out, <laughs> and then go to lift it. Oh, jeez, what's the side? Just not the side. No. <laughs> you go up on the killing line, then, and you'd be there, and when the lads be over there, and I'd be here. You're not supposed to do it like health and safety, like often cut a bit of fat off the thing, like belt it in the back <laughs> of the ear. Another one then was uh, above the cutting area. And the food lads be smoking. I never smoke now, but they'd go along and the belt used to go like that, right? Yeah. And around. They constantly go down like that. So you'd go the full length of this. Just in the loop. You you did um sixty pigs an hour on the belt in the cutting room. And he'd be bumping the top. And just to get the lads going, he'd get a small bit of fat off the belly and you know the butt of a fag mm -hmm. go down to the end of it and he put that on it so the fag was smaller and you ever get burning fat smell burning fat oh it's horrible like is it and he'd leave it on the belt and the belt would go all the way down along the line so it's wild him ah who's at that up there or something like that smell it at it and he said stop the belt a minute and he stop it in the middle of the the thing and you're there to try it with a bit of fat someday, put it light it with just, just a little sour smell, is it? Oh, it was unreal. And this would be the crack all day. Yeah. So, come over Christmas then, we'd be above the cutting room. And uh, Christmas week, we're all looking forward to Christmas. And we get a Christmas parcel. We get two pounds of sausages and a black and white pudding. And that was our Christmas parcel from the factory. That was our Christmas Very present. Very good. Now we'd often have club, we had a club going with Larry Duggan and we'd have our, our Christmas club coming after yeah. him as well. So at Christmas time and anyway, we'd be all above and next thing a sing song would start. The whole line would sing. People hear it on the street and we start with jingle bells, all the Christmas songs and the noise would be hitting the table and it's just, just an atmosphere, a family atmosphere and the crack would be nighting. So, it was a ritual dinner Christmas, we have a half day. Finishing up, last and last. Is this like the 23rd, is it? 24th? 23rd, yeah. right. 
we, if you came in a weekend, we'd often finish the day before, you know. Right. So the ritual was 12 o'clock, the latest. But during that day, then, everybody was over but for points. Yeah. Christmas. It was just a tradition for the old guys and everything. Mm. The old guys would go over, Holly, look after me, the other minute, go over, pack of fags. Yeah. There was a pub over called John Ryan's Pub down in Rochester Street. And uh, there's a little snug in there and the whole lot. The old fellas would pop in there. And they'd be sitting there, point the Guinness. They, they come back then and they start doing their work. And they made a big round stay in the Guinness there in their, their face. Like, no, I said that. No. We're finishing up. So we finish up there at around 12 o'clock, half 12. We'd all go over to John Ryan's pub then. Young fellas and the old fellas and yeah. all that. So kind of a tradition went on for years and years. And we kind of continued on it with the younger people. Christmas came, we all went over. The wives mightn't have liked it, mm-hmm. but that was a kind of a tradition, like, tradition, you know. But um, to think back on, on characters, everybody had a had something. Everybody had something. You had the serious guy, you had the lawyer, you had the joke fella, you had something else, you know. And then you'd have another flag. He'd, he'd be the brainchild. He'd be doing crosswords. And they'd be, they'd have the two about crosswords and like that. But um, everybody had a different a different thing. We had a fella then, and he couldn't control his wind. They called him Doc. <laughs> he could, I'm telling you, he, he could break wind any time of the day. Right. That's facts now. And he'd stink you all of it. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. He was a character in his own self did as well. And uh, you'd have, you'd have all, you'd all the fellas there then, and they just want to be there. I often said to you, what are you doing there? Like, you could do nothing. It's just their life. Then you had another friend there would, if we dropped the knife, he caused an argument over it. You know, yeah. you had, and then you had the, the fellow, the rabble rousers, we used to call them. They'd, they'd say something, rabble rousing, it was a, a saying, in other words, he'd say something for you to pass it on. Okay. Right. And you had these people inside her then as well, like, you know, and they they'd start they they start an issue and they could end up in an argument. They throw it they they throw it down there, and they end up above the office. Okay. So you know all different characters, like you know. Yeah. So you had um when it came to Christmas time, then as I said, we were down the pub, big sing song down there, and we'd all go home. We come back then after the Christmas back to square one again, and we never had long time off, like when I mean, we had Christmas Eve. Half day, Christmas day, so Steve's is day and back the next day. Is it? That compared to now, like, mm. what's Two gonna weeks off. Two weeks off, like, in the thing. Mike, can I ask you one last question? That's okay. Do you know anything about the pig breeds? Oh, the pig breeds, jeez. Oh, see, we, we dealt with. The, I can't pronounce it, working sure, pig. Yeah, okay. Which is normal p- farmer pig. We often got a black pig in. Mm-hmm. Black in colour, like black and white, like. But that would be very rare. The rest of them would be always the sows and. But we had, there was three There was three grades of pig. You had a special, you had a grade A, and you had a fat pig. The fat pig was used for hard cured. That would go to the farmers or all the farmers would do hard cured bacon and cabbage and things like that. The the special pig would be sent for we say big orders like in in England and all these places. Um, the A pig then would be the normal uh, going to the butcher shops, or whatever like that, you know. Okay. Thanks, Michael. And the other other thing then, then we used to export pork. We used to do the pig. When the pig is like that. Yeah. He's pork. Mm-hmm. He's not bacon until we do put, anything to it. Yeah. yeah. He's not bacon until we put pickle into him. Okay. All right. So we we used to do containers of pork. They used to go to France and all these places. And the containers we used to have, we used to the pig would be, be whole, and we put a gauze around it, which would be, be a white stocking. In other words, we tie it. Yeah. And that was put on, and they were hung in individually, and they had um, little shoots inside the the trucks, 
and we used to put a thing called dry coal, dry coal. It was a frozen ice in blocks, and we used to push them in along the top. That used to keep the, the temperature of the pig right. Right? And then uh, and one of the jokes then, I'm just having to think about the other just starting about yeah. the pig. Did you ever see a, a did you ever see a half a pig's head with two eyes? No. It's a joke anyway. Do you know what pig's head? Yeah. Right? Did you ever see a half a pig's head with two eyes? No. Of course you did, but you don't want to. <laughs> Just something. <laughs> I was trying to think. I was like, you were saying that half a big station is only one eye. <laughs> if you're, which one you're to? I was thinking, did you cut it the other way? And the other one, then, if we want to write it out, is another name for a pig's tail mm -hmm. is a mud splasher. Okay. <clears throat> so you're supposed to say why? No, because I can't get what you're saying. <laughs> so when he's gone to the toilet, he was splashed to the left. Thanks, Michael. Thank you. <laughs> Michael, thanks so much for that. <laughs> so that's the best yeah. I can give her now. Brilliant. Yeah, so. We'll leave it there, I'd say, if another for 12. Michael, thank you so no much. Problem. I might come back to you again if I think of anything else. Look, if we need it. If I come, mm -hmm. I'll tell you what I will do. Mm -hmm. I I must have a look. I, I think I have the coloured, when we won the league in cup, a coloured photograph oh, of, of, the the, of the soccer team. Brilliant, yeah. And that would be, this fella's dead in it now as well. Okay. You know, a lot of young fellas in it. But I mean, there's two young fellas that Mikey died, you know, tough, I was to call him. He only died there two years ago. He was in his 40s. You know? Yeah. I'm, I'm 62 now. Yeah. And he was in his 40s. And he was only, he came in after me, like, you know? Yeah. And there's Della Sullivan is in it, and there's a few lads in it, and characters. So if I come across them, I will phone you. Do. Brilliant. And I'll just say, can I meet you? Give them to you. I'll get them back when you're finished. I'm going to know everyone. Yeah, but what I'm trying to say to you, rather than have it for a time or anything like that, I'd. Um